have to buy inventory. But hope is as I sell more units, the margin I get will overturn my, my fixed expenses. And, and you, know, you, you know, do your math, you know, if I sell 10,000 units a year, you know, I'm betting even maybe it's 15,000 units. And then you, see, you, know, you do your calculation, yeah, yeah, 15,000 units is uh, well within the region, uh, reasonable market you know, size. You know. But you end up doing Uber where every ride loses money. I don't produce any positive margin on every unit I sell. This narrative unit is not, no matter what size you become, you will never be profitable. Which is what Uber is. Uber is doing at last something like 40, 50 billion dollars worth of revenue. It's not as they are, you know, when you do the math, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are like, uh, they are selling roughly about uh, something like 11, 12 billion rights a year. Every right loses money. How can that be a real business? <laughs> so their hope is, well, this autonomous car will come and I will get it up by driver expenses. But that's not the business model you, know, you ask people to invest in. You need to have a business where there's a positive unit economics at some size, you know, that positive unit economics, you know, overturns the fits overhead. And that's in math entrepreneurs, you know, that's a race entrepreneur, you know, you know, rather this. Hopefully you will be able to raise enough capital to overturn that barrier. Because the uh, capital markets do fluctuate, right? And you know, uh, so, uh, so I don't see any of these companies. You know, the Paytm, the Ola, uh, Oyo Rooms. I don't see any of them with the positive unit dynamics. Sir, but all the consumer startups, they all are building. All the consumer startups, they're all building. You know, they're saying they're changing habits. They're building GMB, but. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so we are build, changing habits, we are building yeah, GME, yeah, we are drawing, we will be monopoly very soon, right? Yeah, and then that's when we will raise prices. But what you are doing meanwhile, you are training your consumers to expect that discount. And you don't have to change your habits at the end to pay you non-distorted non prices. So you're hoping that you don't change the habit you know, this way to you know, get used to cheap stuff and then you know, change the habits to you know, pay you more to get the expensive stuff. But, but that, that's, that's a part of the problem. The part of the problem other is the technology changes so rapidly. The, by the time you get your monopoly drawing, you might be undermined by the next technology. Next approach, next, next center. Yeah, so, so this whole thing gets built on hope okay. and, and show me the example where that has worked before. And they all talked about Amazon. Amazon lost money for long time. Amazon went public very early on and they explained to the start market every step of the way what they were doing. They were investing massively in, in those automated data centers. They were building AWS, you know, you know, Amazon, you know, a, was losing money, but was a public market you know, explanation being supported by the public rather than the private you know, private money. And you know, Amazon, uh, when they flipped, they are super profitable now. And by the way, but they never sold boots at last. They never sold this, those rapids at last. Their fixed overhead kept going up because they kept building those warehouses with robots and all that. And that's why the reason they were losing. But now you know, Amazon you know, has become a, a powerhouse. But, but those things are, are not easily repeatable. Not easily repeatable. You know, the consumer you know, business is very fitter. You know, nobody owns consumer for very long. There's no loyalty. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, yeah, you, you feel yeah, there's a loyalty in the business. There's no differentiation in technology. 
What is the Paytm doing that Doodle Pay is not doing or will not do? Huh? Yeah, or, yeah, and Doodle Pay is really deep parted, right? Or even the WhatsApp, you know, which is uh, again a uh, bit uh, Facebook money behind that. Yeah. Master Son is running out of money. He's telling all these people to get profitable. Telling them, get on those treadmills and start losing weight. That's what he's telling them, right? You will see how many of them get fit. Yeah, hi, sir. My name is Raghav Agarwal. Uh, first, you know, amazing to hear your talk about frugality as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, my question was, you know, the trend of being private for a long time really started with Facebook, right? Where it stayed much longer private and went public very late in its life. And then everyone said, oh, that's a great way because you sort of focus on the user, you focus on your business use case. And Facebook, for all its privacy issues, is a profitable uh, business. Yeah. What went wrong when you go to Uber and WeWorks where they have also remained private for far too long? But they are still not able to generate number. Yeah, the, the Facebook had a very yeah, simple business model. They had a zero trust for every unit they sold. They were building massive user base. They were spending money to acquire customers. But what customers were consuming was charging them zero. You know, so it wasn't as if, you know, see, in case of Uber, what customer is consuming is tossing Uber money every unit they sell. But that wasn't the case with Facebook. And the you know, Facebook had zero trust approach in what they were selling. So, so when they decided to, you know, all right, you know, uh, we have now a billion users, and, and you know, that's, that's when they decided to turn the uh, monetization on, right? And as soon as they turned the monetization on, it took them no time whatsoever to show you massive profits. Facebook's math, oh, by the way, I'll give you a couple of other examples. Facebook's math was simple. Hey, we are collecting consumers. Is it charging us, you know, I think five dollars, six dollars to collect each consumer? Each of these consumers is easily uh, going to be worth you know, 50 to 100 dollars to us if you do, if you want to turn the monetization on. So why would I acquire more and more consumers? And, and it's, a, you know, it's money in the bank type of thing. Uh, and, and they were able to sell the story to the to the investors, and uh, and uh, uh, and they did prove that each consumer was at least turned out to be more than worth 100 dollars. That's easy. Facebook is worth that ton of money. Each consumer is proving to be more than 1,000 dollars or so right now. So they had spent five dollars to acquire them. So there's, there's a math called you know, CSE, customer acquisition cost. There's a, you know, a math called LTV, long-term value of the customer. You know, if I can spend money to acquire a customer and I can recoup that money in six months or so or less, then you know, I just reap the benefits. You know, and, and, you know, that bar has improved over and over and over. I need to have a good handle on my CSE. I have a good handle on my LTV. You know, then, then investors will give you the money. But when you look at you know, these companies, they have a massive CSE. It takes three, four, five years to recoup your customer efficient trust. And then you have a narrative unit dynamics. You know, and and yeah. so it, yeah, it, it's not a model that, you know, that math, math does, doesn't work, you know, and I don't want to ever fight with math. Yeah. Okay, I'm Alpina. We are looking for venture. And we are very profitable, and we have not raised money. We believe in what you say. Yeah. But now, for taking a jump from here, we don't know, people are chasing us for money, but we don't want to raise. Yes. So how do we do the networking, and how do we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, if you have a positive unit economics and you're able to run a business and if I can make it 10 times as big with the additional money, why would I do it? You know, you know, I'm not saying that get into a habit of burning tons of money. You know, I, you know, you know how the business is expanded. If I open a store here and I make that store profitable, Hey, I know how to build a store. I know how to make it profitable. I open the net store. It's going to cost me money. As a company, I will lose money. But I maintain my unit economics at the first store. You know, you know, yeah. So I am telling the investors, you know, give me the money to open the net store. Give me the money to open the third store. So you, you end up separating your current business, you know, stable business, <coughs> profitable business, you know, and to evolving business, your know, growing business. And, you know, and if you manage it right, you can do it with very little additional money, part of your profits, 
but but you can the speed up you drop by factor of two, three, four, five. Yeah, is a, that don't is to create total wealth. If I have a profitable, predictable business model that money can help me scale very quickly, I should do it. But then sometimes you feel that taking money might you might not even be. To that no, yeah, but that is, is, I, I, if you said, I said, if you have a predictable, scalable model, where, you, know, you think the money will make the difference. If you don't think money will make the difference, you know, then don't do it, right? Network, we were looking for more networking and mentoring, not money. Network and mentoring for a profitable business to me is archimoron. You know, you already know what, how to make money, how to make your profit, business profitably. <laughs> yeah, the very few people you'll find out there you know, who can help you, you know, become even more profitable, right? Yeah, I, I think the money does make a difference. You know, it's, it's it's a situation where you are in, right? Yeah, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. It, there is smart money available. There is smart money available for those situations. I have a profitable business. Yeah, I need some advice and some cash. Uh, by the way, good VC money comes up wrapped in advice and, and, and connections anyway. Yeah, the people who just bring the money to the table are not a good investors. Yeah, yeah, they have to bring, yeah, bring some. Yeah, yeah. yeah but just, just, just let me give you one more thought. When businesses start to grow very rapidly, you know, they start doubling, tripling. The entrepreneur has to grow faster than his business. Just to stay up with the business. Yeah, spiritually, professionally, you know, everywhere. Very hard for people to draw. Yeah, yeah. They are barely keeping up with the uh, the chaos yeah, that, that 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 growth brings. So you have to learn to become a uh, yeah, little bit more detached from your daily operations. You start to drive the business from numbers. You become numbers oriented. You don't become yeah, what I call operation oriented. You, know, you become a CEO, the other people are running, you are measuring metrics, are my metrics improving? You know, if I double the size, it have my metrics improved or they turn worse? If my metrics are worse and I double the size, <laughs> that was a stupid decision to make. So, so, so you become a number driven abstract, you know, detached manager you know, as you draw. You know, so, you know, most businesses fail because the founder doesn't draw as rapidly as the business does. Yeah. And yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, what's the solution to that problem? And, and, and that's a problem. You know, if you don't, you have to learn to manage people as a first step. Then you have to learn to manage people through managers. Then you have to learn to manage you know, people through two levels of management. You get distant from the real action. And you got to be very comfortable with that but for you to succeed. My name is Rajesh and I have a question for you. Uh, Kalanik and uh, even uh, Newman and at one point of time you see jobs that are thrown out of their own companies. So how should entrepreneurs protect them from this poor or river moment? Only protection an entrepreneur has uh, from being thrown out is, is a good performance. Nobody ever throws anybody out who is performing. Ownership is no protection whatsoever. 20 votes per share is no protection whatsoever. Yeah, so if you are worried about protection, protecting yourself, you are thinking the wrong way. There is no protection available to you unless, unless you are convincing the people that you are the right person you know, uh, and deliver the results, and will deliver the results. I owned 6% of the company at the end and I was in complete control. You yeah, when we were public. I was in complete control. Yeah. People knew what to expect from me. Uh, people knew, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, and they were seeing the numbers. So, so when you start to say, I need to protect, no matter what my performance is, yeah, yeah, you have been very unreasonable, right? Steve Jobs was thrown out. The performance was awful at the time when he was thrown out. He came back as a very mature person. You know, the Apple had been losing badly to IBM PC. Apple was the tint of the hill when the IBM PC was introduced. And IBM PC was selling, outselling him hundredfold by the time he was fired. 
Yeah, he wouldn't open up the system. He wouldn't open up the system. You know, so people say, they came from nowhere. You know, they bit of oversized, they bit in twice oversized, they hurt times oversized. That's the reason he was fired. He went bad, understood, he tried the next and went nowhere. And then he came back you know, with a totally different mindset and, and he never looked back, right? Now, looking at it from an aggregate perspective, mm -hmm. you have met hundreds and hundreds of Indian entrepreneurs. If we were to do a SWOT analysis of Indian entrepreneurs, what would that be? Well, Indian entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley are the best of the best. Great. Yeah. It's very yeah. 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 And they are better with the CEOs of the of the best companies. You know, Sundar Pichai and Satyendra Daila and uh, and Sandu Narayan. You know, and those are the names you hear, but they are all much of them. If you take Fortune 100 companies, there are 11 Indian CEOs in America. So we know nothing wrong with Indian genes. Right. That's where I start. Come back to the what's happening in India. I think the Indian entrepreneurs are, are very good here too. They have to uh, adopt the best practices. They have to become more independent thinkers. They have to look at the math. They are not to be swayed by Newman's and other examples. Yeah, because they misconstrue what happened over there, and they misapply to their own thing. You know, and. Uh, it's unfortunate, you know, it's a son son so uh, By the way, I was there at Startup India conference you know, where all these deals are done, you know, where he invested in both WeWork and in, and, and in Uber. All three guys were there at Startup India conference in 2016? Yeah. Yes. You know, I was there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he stood up and said that he will invest 10 billion dollars in India. And total investments in India, you know, at the, that then turn rate was less than a billion. So, when the money supply increases, doesn't automatically increase the supply of good entrepreneurs. You know, what that means, I got the price inflation now. I got the money changing the same number of entrepreneurs. Uh, and so, you know, there is a valuation inflation and that's exactly what happened. And I don't blame entrepreneurs for taking the money easily available. Yeah, but there is an after party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a handover. Yeah, which we uh, we, uh, we will have here too soon. Questions, uh, please. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the people are here in the back. Hi, I'm Sonia, and I think I come from the same era like you do. Because in 2000, I launched my first startup. It was a marketplace for fashion from India and yeah. Arabia. We did very, very well. When I exited in 2006, we were cash positive. Ooh. 20 years later today, we still service the same clients. Mm. Uh, I've just come in with another venture, uh, 2017. We are in 10 countries with the same for m capital. Mm. Uh, we went in from 10 countries. We just got uh, kind of incubated by m and the travel venture. Yeah. What I'm feeling is, uh, so it's the time where we thought maybe we should go for funding. And I find that exactly what you're saying rings true with me, it echoes with me. I find taking 15x capital a little unreasonable because I will never be able to return at a 15x. Do you know of any model when it comes to financial modeling that you know or you have experience and you can think of that can give us the funding? I'm not talking about their funding, you know, which is also strategic funding and stuff, which is, which is really interesting. But what should be the new format of funding? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. yeah, the word I, 15 that I use is for startups. Yeah. You know, this is the early stage capital going into early stage startup. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 15 net is possible. What do you know? It tells you that you will never return 15 net. You might return 100 nets. You know, so when, when I did the modeling, when I was doing Epsilon, we were promising uh, the basis 10 nets. And they made 100 nets. Yeah, so you know, the, success of, the size of the success is not up to you. Size of the success depends upon the size of the market that you tap into. And, and, and then you know, the, and, 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 and the management skills you bring to the party, you know, the, the, the team that you build, you know, the product that you offer, those are table states. 
but if market is bigger than you thought. You know, when I was doing networking, you know, I did the calculations that yeah, maybe we'll sell 50,000 nodes of computers. Yeah, you know, look, that back then that that number was very large in my you know, my you know, early you know, the 50,000 watches had been sold and you know, 5,000 IBM mainframes had been sold. But the PC, nobody knew PC you know, started selling 100,000 units a month, then million units a month, then 10 million units a month, then 100 million units a month. I mean, I mean I'm sorry, yeah, the PC these 25 million units, 300 million units a year. So there were numbers of PCs being sold that nobody could even imagine. I was selling 50,000 PC connections a month. There would have been absolutely unthinkable, incomprehensible number. So I don't think you, you should worry about that part. Yeah, 15 ads is very reasonable uh, return to expect for the winners. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, do the, I do the math. It all depends upon how much capital you consumed. Uh, all depends, yeah, I do the math all the time when I sit down with the uh, entrepreneur. So, all right, so you think you're worth $19 million, the guy says, yeah. Yeah, how much capital you raise beyond this one? Yeah, but I gave you a million, a million is not going to more than a year. We do the, it does the math, it's already yeah, about 20, uh, $25 million, okay. So by the time you last do the last round, yeah. you, when, when I started to do, you know, do the math, I started with 5% ownership and I'm down to 1% ownership. Yeah. Yeah, for me to make my yeah, 50 nuts, yeah, my share has to be worth yeah, 15 million dollars, and it's one percent of the whole company. You do your math, right? Yeah. So I, I do, yeah, and most smart VCs do that math very quickly in their head. Yeah. Valuations depend upon yeah, how much capital you're gonna need. Yeah, yeah, uh, over how many rounds, and what's the, the dilution? And I, I think they, yeah. There used to be a very simple U.S. Uh, formula that worked for very long. Uh, a round came in to help you do design of your product, you know, you know, do the initial market testing, do the prototyping. B round came in to help you, you know, uh, engage with the marketplace very quickly, you know, found a handful of customers, you know, you know, and tested with them, and then maybe you know, another handful of customers. And C round says, share it up. I have a product that works, market lights it. Yeah, how do I open up? You know, and, and, and that, that you know, but now you have pre-seed round, seed round, A round, A1 round, B round, C round. Yeah, yeah the, this latest round at uh, Paytm was E round, right? You know, and, and uh, where does this end? Yeah, what are you raising money for? You know, the door was to you know, perfect the product, yeah, it, yeah, engage with the marketplace, you have to see if it works and it can be sustained and, and, and it, yeah, yeah, it does what likes it and then scale it up, yeah. So, yeah, so when I sit down, yeah, but so by the way, yeah, just to give you a couple of other thoughts. There was a difference between a manager and an entrepreneur. It's taking. Huh? Risk. Risk taking. Vision. Anybody else? Vision. 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 Risk and vision. A broader perspective. Broader perspective. Who has broader perspective? Entrepreneur. Manager is the operations guy and the entrepreneur is the main person. Strategy. Innovation. Capability to innovate. Okay. So I'll tell you a different way of thinking. Manager by definition is a manager of assets. You have assets in the company, factory, employees, inventory, customers, they are all assets. His job is to streamline everything to make sure these assets are being efficiently used, productively used. Manager's job is to make sure the trains are running on time. Everything works. Orders are terminated, in, parts is being built, it's being shipped, money is being collected, right? Is a management, you know, bottom one. Entrepreneurs doesn't have any assets. Entrepreneur is a thinker, innovator, disruptor. He doesn't have any assets. He wants to disrupt somebody else's business to steal his apple tart, steal his apple from his apple tart, right? 
entrepreneur makes something out of nothing. Managers like stable, predictable environment. They want to be able to plan inventory, plan shipments, plan this, plan that, right? And if they can improve productivity by one to two percent, they are heroes because if you're making 10 percent profit, you have one to two percent productivity improvement, you have 20 to 30 percent, uh, 10 to 20 percent improvement in your performance, right? So managers are streamliners, they are always they are doing passage improvement. Entrepreneurs, to care less for 2% improvement. They want 10x, 100x improvement. So here's the problem. Every entrepreneur, when he starts to succeed, starts to produce assets. He likes to disrupt and innovate. But now he has assets, he needs to now start managing those assets productively. He has to change his behavior. He has to change his nature. Very hard thing to do. You always you know, are tintering. You know, telling, you know, yeah, 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 fire yeah, yeah. So, you know, you, you know, entrepreneurs thrive in chaos. They thrive in rapid change. They get bored in stable, predictable environments. But, but the problem is that once I start to create assets, I need to learn to, you know, I have inertia now. I can't move as rapidly as I used to. Yeah. So, so there is this uh, dilemma that you know, every entrepreneur either has to transition to become a manager or bring a manager on board as his partner. You manage my current assets while I tinker, innovate, disrupt on the fringes. Yeah, so, so, so that's, that's, a, yeah, that's a, big, a big issue because uh, a lot of these uh, yeah, entrepreneurs end up disrupting their own business and going nowhere. And they never stabilize it. Yeah, one of the reasons we have this problem with uh, uh, Olas and Paytm, they never stabilize it. So look at uh, 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 Vijay Shetra Sharma. This uh, Paytm is third or fourth international business, right? 197 or whatever it was that we started out? That's the holding company. No, 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 but that was a business at one time. Yes. Yeah, you know, that business model is okay. yeah, right? You know, he's selling those, uh, the, the tight term services, you know, the, yeah. 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 You know, he, he, but he has never stabilized and my, you know, any of those assets. You know, he moves on to the death sense, right? Yeah, yeah, so the, the point uh, being the, yeah, entrepreneurs and managers are polar opposite of each other. Yeah, from a society's perspective, yeah, which one is better, entrepreneur or a manager? Huh? Entrepreneurs are better. It has to be a synergy. You're only yeah. running on the fringes yeah. without building the yeah. yeah, so I'll tell you, you know, for society perspective, managers add stability <coughs> to the environment. They make the current assets very you know, stable and productive, and, uh, and managers add dynamism into the environment. You have to make sure things you know, don't go stagnant. And you need to have a healthy balance of entrepreneurs and managers in the company, in the society. You know, a entrepreneur who doesn't manage very quickly learns that he loses all his assets. And managers who doesn't you know, respect entrepreneur, the entrepreneur behavior you know, runs his business into drown because becomes stagnant. You know, new technology, new thing state overtakes them right very quickly. You know, we have seen this happen to newspaper business in America. We have seen this happen to many many businesses, right? Yeah, we uh, we can go and talk. So society needs both. You know, the healthy balance of those. You know, I talked about managerial country. Japan, standing for a long time. Entrepreneurial country, Nigeria. Yeah, very unstable. Yeah, yeah, US is very stable. Yeah, in, in, in India, yeah, is still uh, trying to find its balance. Uh, most entrepreneurs fail when they have to go to certain level of management. When they cannot manage, yeah, they learn to manage people, then they learn to manage people through managers, but they learn, they do not learn to manage managers through managers. Most entrepreneurs fail at that stage. The two-jointed machine is too hard for them to work. And yeah, and uh, very few entrepreneurs are able to draw beyond $50 million of revenue business and manage it. Yeah, yeah. So you need to bring 
Uh, by the way, you cannot change the nature of an entrepreneur. He is always going to be innovator, disruptor, thinker. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with the yeah, status quo. He's always going to be uh, really, yeah, 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 they are, yeah, they love stability, they like productivity, yeah, they like order, they like to improve processes. So, so you need to have a partnership. You need to have a partnership of a manager and entrepreneur. So each respects other. Happened at Google. Yeah, they brought yeah, Ed Smith and you know, and he stabilized it up. The yeah, and happened at uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, yeah, what's Cheryl's last name? Cheryl. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, Sandberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, 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 bit of, happened at Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do. Yeah, yeah, Mike Peoples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Peoples, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah who was the CEO? Yeah. So entrepreneurs yeah, does his thing on the fringes. In yeah, new stuff, new thing, new technology, new markets. Yeah, the manager manages the you know, entire business. Yeah. Can we, you talk? You talk about society. From Indian perspective, the number one need is job creation. So would you recommend that every entrepreneur here in their business model bring in job creation as a some strategic input in spite of it may or may not be profitable or may have some other consequences? <laughs> Job creation for the creation of job situation yeah, without being profitable is not sustainable, right? Yeah. 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 He's talking about yeah, yeah, my new my new mission in life. Yeah. I keep trying. Uh, yeah. We have yeah, tried in India in the planning. Yeah. We we spent 300 plus billion dollars to build those public sector yeah, businesses. And yeah, we have tried to invite the foreign investors to come and invest here with no such as to speak of. By the way, three hundred billion dollars invested in those public sector industries have been the biggest wealth destroyer ever. The rate of return on that three hundred billion dollars investment is one and a half percent. Yeah. So we yeah, that's a job creation machine by the way. You're producing jobs but trust is a huge amount of money. Yeah. yeah. I think it's time for us to turn to our entrepreneurs and turn loose our yeah, yeah, animal spirits at the at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Let's can, can we turn out one percent of the Indians into entrepreneurs? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One to two percent is uh, the number that works. Yeah, and let them do whatever they need to do. Yeah, let them yeah 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 build their companies. Yeah, if on average they hire 20 people, on average yeah yeah one percent is 12 and a half million people, 13 million people. You know, you trade 250 million, 260 million jobs in India. Yeah. So I said yeah, as a public policy, if I was if I was yeah, the prime minister of India, I would say I have one mission in life. How do I create jobs in India through entrepreneurship? What is, the, uh, what is my policy framework for that? Well, these entrepreneurs need capital, so let's roll out that, that carpet uh, to capital from anywhere in the world. Yeah. You know, please give us your uh, risk capital, your savings so, you know, to our entrepreneurs. You know, I don't care how much money you make, I won't tax you on that money. You know, please give us your, your, your savings. And, uh, 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 do I help entrepreneurs? No, no, I don't need to help them anymore. <coughs> yeah. take, take care of all this uh, yeah, compliance policy yeah, friction that you create here. File this paper, file that paper. Take care of all that then. Yeah. Yeah. Just turn your entrepreneurs loose. Yeah. I think you, you could transform India overnight. But I'm not the Prime Minister of India, and I'm too old to be Prime Minister of India. And I'm uh, American yeah, by, by yeah, choice now. Yeah, I carry the US passport. Social impact entrepreneurship. What do you think of the confluence of social impact and entrepreneurship? Yeah, I, I, see, I, the word I hate most is social entrepreneurs. I think that that's oxymoron. Every entrepreneur <coughs> has a positive social in, impact. You know, what I do, is that an anti-social entrepreneurship? <laughs> Creating jobs and wealth in society is a very socially responsible thing to do. If I start to worry about poor, that's what we've been doing for the last 75 years. No, I don't mean poor. No, 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 I'm saying social entrepreneurship is doing social good, right? No, how is that? Social impact. impact. So, job creation has the maximum social impact. Yes. 
The operation has a maximum social impact, empowering people through jobs and self-respect as a maximum social impact. Yeah. And then, it, it, then you show them the way, A, you can get even a better job and make even more money if you upsteal yourself. You have to get this empowerment back into people. I, I, when I come back to say, I can solve this problem uh, socially, uh, with social entrepreneurship, doesn't solve the large uh, Our problem at the societal level is we have a massive uh, population of young, unemployed people. Yes. Uh, and we have a massive uh, uh, amount of young, un unemployable people. In the farm. So, so, so let me give you some you know, uh, uh, simple way of thinking. Half the population of India is in farming using bullet tarts uh, technology. Half the population of India, right? In the farm sector. Agriculture. Half the population, right? Yeah. Yeah, it probably more than half. half yeah. If half the population of India is in that sector using bullet tarts, you know, producing just barely food, uh, enough food for themselves and one other Indian. Half the people produce food for, you know, 100%, uh, right? India will always be poor, will always have these social problems. Will always have this, you know, because you have chosen to stay poor by not letting things happen, right? In the US, uh, less than 2% of the population is in farming. Every farmer produces enough food for himself and 49 other Americans and, and some export. export. American farmers are very rich. So your basic problem is that we have allowed job creation in India to sort of the labor of the farms you know, through entrepreneurship. You know, whether it's manufacturing or exporting this to uh, something or doing what, I don't care as long as we create jobs in India, right? Social impact will be phenomenal if that happens. And I, I, I end up saying, yeah, you can do band-aid here and there, social impact on this and that, but you don't have enough capital, enough wealth in the country to have impact on the mass scale. I think we'll do more, we five minutes for two. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a company, a 20-year-old product company, profitable. It's based out of Nasik. I've been to Nasik. Yeah, famous for yeah, the, the, the bananas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nasik was on my way from Tanpur to, to Mumbai during my IIT days. We have offices as well. It's about 200 employees uh, company, uh, profitable, growing at about 15% every year. Uh, but till now, we haven't taken any external capital. So, uh, we are thinking of taking external capital, we need to fund product development and, and to grow faster. So, what route we should take? Should we take the VC route or any problem? If you are 15 percent uh, profitable, uh, 15 percent growth and profitable, yes. yeah, uh, your yeah, capital should come to you pretty cheap. Your yeah, capital should become available to you very cheap. Yes. Yeah, both that capital and the venture capital, uh, the equity capital. Yeah, yeah, in India, there is a notion of ownership forever to pass the ownership on to my children. Something here, right? But I. I should have a, a, a more moral view. Every phenomenon, everything is temporary. You know, the students will do their own adventure, they will do their own uh, educate them. You know, and different groups are the values. Yeah, that capital, if you can sustain it, yeah, that, that yeah, easy, right? Yeah, if you have, yeah, I, I, you said 15 percent growth, how much profit would be? You know, 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent? About 50 to 80 percent. Oh, yeah, you should have no trouble raising money. Yeah, right? Yeah. Come and talk to me. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the problem on the, on the, the equity side is, yeah, they will own your, your turn part of your business, right? Yeah, because, yeah, they don't want to assume the risk of your new business. Yeah, the other, other thing is that, hey, why don't we do a separate venture where I learn the stuff here, I bring the technology management, you put in the money, yeah, and that happens all the time, by the way, yeah. But, but you need, yeah, a savvy PE dash, not the VC dash. Huh? 
the PE guys have a mindset of how do we scale up uh, without disrupting your core business. Uh, the VC guys are how do we build a business from ground zero. So PE guys, you know, um, you know, don't talk to, you know, what is that, so, uh, Sumir Shedda at uh, you know, West Bridge. Yeah, that's what it does. Hey, hey, you have a stable, predictable 15% uh, uh, growth uh, with the 15-20% you know, profit rate. Yeah, let me uh, work with you and uh, how do we uh, build the growth to 50% without losing your equity in the old stuff. Yeah, so, so they, 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 yeah. See, there is a specialization in the financing business also. Yeah. Last question. I just want to say thank you for time. Your question? I'd love to know how you started Thai, what was your vision at Thai? And I'm the oldest graduate of Thai, this is the youngest graduate of Thai mm -hmm. Academy. And that's the time to you. We need this, like you said, mentorship, strategy, yeah. thinking, networking. I can't thank you enough for four You know, okay. I don't want to take it for Thai as uh, my creation. They were, a lot of people, right? they were a big team of people. They are visionaries. You know, there they was, uh, you know, about a dozen of us you know, who said, you know, we have done well. Uh, uh, and people still don't believe in Indians. So why don't we you know, uh, create a large number of you know, entrepreneurs in the valley? You know, that was the vision. You know, it was very local vision in Silicon Valley. Uh, we with mentors. Most of our journeys were very lonely journey. You know, none of us had a mentors. You know, and so how do we become the mentors? How do we uh, become the and you know, you know, Barrow turned out to, to be very productive. Barrow, you know, it was almost instant hit. You know. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about separate management and entrepreneur, uh, yellow yeah. management on board. So they are almost partners. What happens to decision making? Considering they both come from different mindsets. No, I said they each have to respect other. But does that happen? It happens all the time. Your, your, the entrepreneur has to acknowledge that he needs a manager, and manager needs to acknowledge that he, it's the entrepreneur who builds the company. Yeah, but when the real situation comes in, decision making, they both come from different mindsets. No, no. So you manage the business that as is currently, I will innovate on the fringes for the next you know, business. I won't you know, disrupt you know, the business I have built right now, you manage. You know, but there's a budget for me, you know, financing resources for me. So I'm doing the new products, new markets, new things that, you know, that are not within your purview. So yeah, there's a division of labor. But each has to respect other as they are. Yeah, each know, should know that they need the other. <coughs> yeah. and it, you know, this is a very proven model in the US. I've given you all the examples here. You know, that at some size, you ought to be smart enough to know that I need to have help here to run the train sometime. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, then uh, being part of a successful entrepreneur, that you should know your own limitations. Right. Thank you very much. I think. You can see that the wealth of experience that you have. Please wait for another 15 minutes. Please wait for another 15 minutes. Please feel free to mingle with him and ask whatever questions that you have. Sir, how are you? I'm a great fan of yours and I'm part of the Thai.